congratulations everybody. What better place to offer you congratulations than in a garden? This is the Spirit of Health Garden. It's beautiful. We got cucumbers, watermelon, cantaloupe. We got all kinds of great herbs growing in here. And this is our little urban garden. We're in the city. We just do the best we can, but we love it. We love the fact that we have a garden. I wanted to congratulate you for completing the Summer Detox Challenge. Now, when I say completing the Summer Detox Challenge, I know everybody's at a different place. Some people weren't able to do it all the way through. Some people had a lot of ups and downs. Some people are still cleansing. Some people are just getting into it. It doesn't matter. There's any time that you can cleanse. It really doesn't matter when you start, but the summer is easiest to cleanse and it's a great time to do it, but I encourage you to continue if you're part way through it. My wife and I, we had a lot of ups and downs. We had a lot of successes. Um, I got into a lot of deeper levels of fasting. I actually uh, experimented a lot with dry fasting and had great benefits from that, um, but we also had some struggles. Uh, through it. We weren't able to do all the cleanses perfectly all the way through and I don't really expect anybody to. It's really a journey and it's about growing and it's about learning. It's about learning about our body, becoming more aware, becoming aware of food, becoming aware of symptoms in our body and what's happening to our bodies, understanding the crucial importance of cleansing. And there's so many important aspects to this beyond following some perfect plan or some perfect diet. It's never ever really about that. So we just encourage you to just continue. Again, no matter where you're at, we just want you to keep moving forward. Also, coming into now the fall and the winter, we want to eat a nourishing diet. Everybody asks me, well, what's the maintenance program? How should I eat coming off of this? You know, if you did mainly fruits and vegetables for the summer, going into the fall and the winter, you might want to eat more cooked foods. You might want to eat more nourishing, strengthening, building foods. You want to, might want to eat more lean proteins. You might want more, um, maybe do some bone broths. Uh, as long as you keep it clean, um, that's the key. And you have to know where you're at and where your body's at and where your family's at. There's all kinds of great programs out there. I really encourage you to look at body ecology diet. I encourage you to check out the uh, certain aspects of the GAPS diet. You know, we'll probably do some bone broths this, this winter. We don't eat a lot of meat. We, we find that we tend to eat a little bit less and less um, as we kind of go on this journey, but we're certainly not against eating meat. Um, at least that's not where we're at right now. And uh, we might stick to mainly chicken because, you know, we never eat pork, but beef, you know, is definitely on the heavy side. So that's probably more of a rare treat, but we mainly stick to like chicken and chicken broth and making crock pot dinners. Uh, more steamed vegetables and more soups in the winter. Again, more strengthening, nourishing foods because it depends on where you live. We're here in Kansas City, we have winter. If you're in Minnesota, you have winter. If you're in Hawaii, if you're in California, <laughs> it might be different. You might do more raw, you might do more fruits and vegetables. So again, you just want to keep it clean. That's the whole point of this, honoring God, honoring creation, honoring our bodies. I still encourage people to stay away mainly from the grains, the sugars and the dairy. And when I say sugars, I'm talking about even complex sugars that are healthy sugars, like even maple syrup and honey and agave and cane sugar and those things. And if you do them, make it a treat, make it uh, more of a, a special family event where once a month you, you make some you know buckwheat pancakes and you have maple syrup or whatever. Again, this isn't about following some perfect program, but it's really about a journey of learning together, loving together, encouraging each other, separating ourselves from a world that has created sickness and disease and death, unfortunately, in the processed food industry. So some people are really into Weston A. Price. Uh, some people aren't. Some people more into raw foods. Some people more into cooked foods. You know, if you're into Chinese medicine, you're more into cooked foods. And so there's no perfect way. There's no perfect way to eat. That's one thing I'm really discovering as I also go through this journey is that, you know, you read a book or you hear from somebody, you get inspired and you want to be a raw foodist or you want to do Weston A. Price or you want to eat all cooked foods or whatever. You really got to find out what works for you. You know, ultimately what matters is that we're living a clean life, a godly life, a holy life. And I believe part of living a godly, holy life is honoring him in this area of food and nutrition and honoring our temples and honoring our bodies. That's why we're doing this, right? That's why hopefully you were provoked to do this. And I've heard the stories. I've heard people, all the weight they've lost and how amazing they feel and they're exercising again. And I've heard dozens of stories just from what's happened during the summer detox challenge. And I know the Lord's gonna keep taking us deeper. I know next year, like we haven't seen anything yet. Next year, we're gonna go deeper. We're gonna continue to go after it. 
And again, it depends on your heart, your um, conviction with the Lord, your family, what you might be dealing with. Again, there's so many factors, but what I'm encouraging you to do is to keep it clean through the fall and the winter. We can hit it hard again in the spring. I know there's going to be deeper revelation from the Lord. I, do, I know there's more prayer and fasting coming because that is what's going to usher in the kingdom, and that's what shifts things in the heavens, is prayer and fasting. Jesus made that very clear that we are to pray and we're to fast. And so I will definitely have my heart set on that as we go deeper into understanding the human body, sickness and disease, turning away from um, this culture, again, that has created, um, just made it very difficult for people to, to be healthy and really to find, to find God in health through nutrition. So I'm glad to be a part of your journey. Again, no matter how successful <laughs> or how many failures you had during this three months, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you've learned something. What matters is that you've grown. What matters is that you tried, even if you fell multiple times. And again, our family was far from being perfect on this, but we've learned a lot and we've gone deeper and we're going to continue to go after it. So again, thank you for being a part of our journey. I'm just honored to hear the stories and share the stories of people being changed and how much more they're encountering God and how they're seeing and hearing more clearly. And I just love it. That's what makes my heart sing. That's what makes me happy. And so thanks for supporting Spirit of Health. Thanks for being a part of the Summer Detox Challenge at any level in which you were. And look forward to future videos where we're going to go harder, we're going to go deeper, and really it's, it's, it's because God, it's God's calling on our life to go deeper into the true things of God in health, in nutrition, in these beautiful temples that God created in His image. He's jealous for them, and He's jealous for you. I love you. Amen. See you next time.